You're listening to Short Inspirations from Ralph. To be loved means to be chosen. A few points today. The first is this. When I'm chosen, I am seen as unique. God hasn't made a whole lot of the same people. Like sausages out of a sausage machine. You are totally unique. And it's like God is whispering into your ear, I love you and you are mine, as we said in the last episode. That's so powerful. Love confers a sort of chosenness on the one who is loved. Love whispers, I choose you. Like the captains on the sports field that are picking the sides. I choose you and he's looking at you in your eye. I want you to be on my side and I want to be on your side. How powerful, powerful that is. For the scarred and the sin-wracked people, for people with misshapen spirits and crooked hearts and lopsided souls, this is life to you. If you were to give your testimony right now, you would probably say something in a roundabout way. Perhaps someone somewhere, maybe many years ago, said words of life into me and believed in me. That's exactly what happened to me many years ago. People in my life that God had put there said some words into my spirit which I've never ever forgotten and have altered the course of my life. There is no one like you. Even if you're an identical twin, you're not actually the other person. You are you. That's why medical science and forensic science can do wonders in the world of crime. Fingerprints was the first breakthrough and then that's becoming uh, old school. It's, it's DNA and eye colour and air shape and the tonal sounds or patterns in our voices that are totally different than other people. It's amazing. The real answer for our children and young people today isn't only to educate and to throw things at them, but is to give them meaning in life. And that is to know how they're made and that they are unique. They've been crafted by the hand of God. There's no one else like them. The second point is this. When I'm chosen, it means somebody wants me. I'm not isolated. Isolation is the biggest issue when people want to end their lives. But being chosen means that somebody else out there wants us. Even if we're brought up in a home that uh, discarded us and rejected us and didn't have time for us. And we are not wanted just for what we can do, but for who we are. We are chosen, we are wanted because God's love for us is so far-reaching and so beyond belief that he could love us just for who we are. Of course, the way we're made and the giftings we have are important, of course. And my third point is when I'm chosen, I'm recognized as someone who has something to contribute. And so our God, our Creator, has designed us and put all these incredible giftings and urges. It's called having a purpose in life. It's having a destiny, having a future. And that's what we're talking about here. When Jesus said to Peter, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. There's a whole lot in that statement because he was appealing to the way that Peter had been made and the giftings that he had. This chosenness is really interesting because in our worldly and human systems often there is dog eat dog or there is a survival of the fittest according to the Darwinian philosophies but in God because we're incredibly unique there's no competition with each other in that way there certainly is rewards that we will get but there's no competition and in our humanness and then when you look at Olympic Games or whatever you'll see that people are striving 
to become the number one. And that means that all the other people who competed uh, have missed out. But in God, there is absolute fulfillment in the fact that we are loved and chosen and valued and are precious to him. May God bless you today.